right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Time Machine 2021. Uh, this is the first session we're having now. Uh, there's still a few people trickling in, but uh, I don't want, want to keep you waiting and get a bit off schedule. So uh, with that, I'm very happy to uh, introduce Freddy Kaplan to uh, give the opening presentation. Thank you, Kevin. Um, welcome to everybody. I'm Freddy Kaplan. I'm the president of the Time Machine organization. I think this is our fourth annual conference, if I, my count are all right, so it's, it's quite an emotion to, uh, to be back again, uh, even if it's virtual again this year, um, to uh, give you some update about the Time Machine adventure. Uh, you have plenty of information uh, during this uh, one and a half day, uh, but I'll, I'll give you some, some, some spotlight in that first introductory talk. But before we go into the, the main content, uh, let me maybe just talk about uh, uh, one minute about one of my personal hero. Uh, you probably know him. He's called Stewart Brand. Uh, recently, he's been doing been the head of the Long Now Foundation. It's a, it's a foundation which is trying to build a, a clock that will actually uh, count for ten thousand years and essentially promote long term thinking. Uh, but of course, it's it's most uh, is most famous essentially for what he did uh, sixty years ago which was launching the whole Earth catalog. Uh, this is a, a, a publication that played a very big role in the history of, uh, of the Silicon Valley but, and of computer science in general. And the whole idea of the whole Earth catalog is was, it, was, it was giving access to tools. It was uh, a catalog, uh, as its name is, is, uh, is suggesting, uh, that was covering uh, very concrete, pragmatic, and practical uh, elements uh, to be capable of doing almost everything you may need to do uh, in life, uh, ranging from uh, what books to read, what uh, uh, tools to use, and specifically aimed at those who were at this period, so we're talking about 69, 70, uh, trying to invent a new way of life, uh, going back to various places uh, in the United States, and uh, inventing uh, some form of uh, new way of uh, living. And one of these, uh, of the most famous uh, community is the Drop City community, there are several of those. Um, and, and the catalog was, was super useful in the sense that they were helping these uh, young people uh, trying to uh, solve their practical day-to-day -day matter. Um, the underlying idea, was that if uh, local communities are capable of sharing technology, uh, well, some of the, and if they share also some big ideas, then they can potentially change the world. So this is 60 years ago. Uh, the adventure of uh, these going back to the land uh, uh, pioneers uh, is another story I may, I may tell at some point, but uh, you, may, you may think what is the link between uh, this and time machine. Well, when we actually uh, uh, started to work, especially on the on the Venice uh, cases, uh, trying to show that there were possibility of digging up the past using some new technology, uh, there was a, an interesting uh, um, article that was published by um, by Nature that uh, uh, made a, made a story out of this uh, early stage adventure. Also anticipating the fact that what was going on in that particular city could be a model for other city in the world. And uh, in the same year, I think we were in 2017, there was this very nice uh, tweet by Stewart Brand himself that actually thought, oh, that's actually a very nice project. I adore this project. It is, uh, it is something I would like to back up. Uh, so why would he actually tweet something like that? Because in fact, there's some commonalities between what he has been trying to do all his life and uh, what we were trying to do. Uh, the concept of local time machine, which is essentially the idea that you build a more and more dense model of a city of the past, adding the temporal dimension, uh, is uh, the core uh, concept that is now in place in uh, various places of Europe uh, in the world. And the role of the time machine organization is not to do the actual work on the local time machine, but to provide a, a series of tools to help, I mean, this local time machine thrive, uh, make good choices, also serving as a circulating platform in which some of the innovation which are done on the local time machine can be actually uh, tested and reused by uh, other communities. So this schema, you show it probably, you, you saw it probably previous time in the past, it, it demonstrated a kind of synthetic way 
what is the role of the time machine organization. It symbolizes also very concretely what the time machine organization can bring to the local time machine. Uh, we call that a time machine box. It contains a series of concrete tools uh, and, um, and services that help bootstrap uh, the work uh, of the local time machine. Uh, it shows also that some of these tools are slightly longer term, and that is one of the aspects of the time machine work is actually planning and helping the research getting organized uh, on those various type of topics, which may permit to do some breakthrough for the local time machine. And it shows also uh, how uh, the local time machine are connected to the time machine organization with other type of infrastructures and local stakeholders like Europeana uh, in particular. Um, what has changed during the last year is uh, really a change uh, of, of scale. Here you see just uh, some, some snapshot of the, of the current website, which is showing you all the projects which are currently active as part of uh, the time machine uh, as local time machine organized by city. You will find some cities which are big cities, you'll find some cities which are small cities, but what you'll see is that uh, ranging from uh, cities which have a single project to cities which have about 10 projects, there's a whole uh, series of, of um, projects which have been bootstrapping and time machine helps mapping this project, putting them in a, in a common framework and helping them making connection with one another and with the time machine organization as a well. whole. Uh, this is a really a great achievement because I think when we had, I mean, that idea of local time machine a couple of years ago, uh, we were not completely sure, I mean, that the idea would actually scale up and it was possible to uh, not to go beyond, I would say the early uh, case study that we're done in this context. What you see here is at which pace and which uh, rapidity the idea is, is flowing up. And this is relatively new in the global environment of uh, cultural heritage in a sense that uh, this notion of, of local time machine project is structuring a reality which so far was not at all um, mapped. And this is a first step uh, to go beyond this, to organize uh, the work of these projects with one another and pursuing the metaphor we've been, uh, uh, been mentioning. Uh, there's the idea that time machine, if we look at it uh, from this perspective, it can, you can be seen as a distributed community of builders. And, and in that sense, this is very close from maybe uh, Stewart Brand initial ideas that time machine organization organize your circulation and the access to the tools for these builders. So what did we do concretely during the last year to make that possible? Well, we started a series of academia. So the Time Machine Academy are a series of training courses. These are not introductory courses uh, short uh, and, and giving you very superficial uh, elements. And these are quite in-depth courses that very pragmatic, very hands-on, that permits to get a hold on a given subject. Here, for instance, the Time Machine Academy on IIIF, which is one of the protocols we've been supporting since the beginning of, uh, of the Time Machine. Uh, it's organized as all the academies are organized uh, as a free uh, session over three weeks. Uh, and permits really to all the participants to end up not having general ideas, but having concrete uh, know-how on how to use this particular tool for their particular uh, local time machine project. Uh, so one session was done on IIIF, another session was done on the generic segmenting tools uh, that permits to uh, address segmentation of images if they're stored, for instance, on, on IIIF. And the idea is using the knowledge and the experiments of the community itself to help uh, spreading uh, the information and making, I would say, the extra miles towards I mean, what you can read on a paper or read on the web and actually a concrete know-how you can use uh, on your collection. So there's capacity building, which is, which is uh, ongoing. There's a knowledge which are sharing. And these are very concrete steps which permits uh, the community to organize. Um, at another level, which is the level of the planification of the time machine itself, um, building on what we've been doing with uh, European, European money uh, during the time machine CSA, which is a 10 year roadmap for building a large scale uh, infrastructure uh, doing various uh, series of, um, of objective. We've been working again in a collective and distributed manner in what we call the time machine request for comments, which are the series of uh, um, standards, if you want, uh, positions, helping 
again, uh, standardize uh, in a very pragmatic way the way the various uh, local time machines are uh, organizing themselves. Uh, we've been working on uh, GitHub to do this, so we have a technical platform, but that would enable this type of collective writing. And very concretely, um, a month ago, uh, we were able to automatically generate uh, a book, which is now 130 page, which is based by uh, these collective writing, uh, which is done in the request for comments. So we would really like that in the next year, this dynamic is continuing uh, with requests for comment on various aspects of the Time Machine project, which would help the uh, annual publication and extension of that, uh, of that book, which we hope for the next conference will be maybe 200, 300, 400 page, we'll have to see, uh, but which is a kind, which is a kind of, of, um, of concrete output that may help um, newcomers understanding the time machine uh, and the various type of uh, progress in the way of formalizing it. Uh, coming back to the to the builders um, themselves, all those who are working on a given city, uh, trying to build project, uh, find money, uh, and and make uh, the time machine a reality in their uh, local settings. Uh, one of the major efforts we've been doing this year was to uh, help uh, this project find money, and so we we created. Uh, project scouting services, which was trying to bridge the gap between uh, the ambition of the project and various type of European fundings. Uh, this has resulted in some concrete uh, submissions to which are currently under review. We we'll, we'll have the results um, in, uh, in the coming months uh, to help these various projects uh, bootstrap. Um, more specifically, a specific uh, interregional partnership was actually created and done under the uh, uh, supervision and control of the Time Machine uh, organization, helping finding regional um, case studies uh, that were of excellence uh, through a series of various regions which were, uh, which were sub the subject of this particular um, support. And again, working uh, in uh, trying to see what they had in common, uh, helping them bootstrapping themselves and continuing this very local mapping uh, of the various initiatives. Uh, we've been working since the beginning of uh, our work with Schumann Associate. They're based in Brussels and they follow very precisely uh, all the various funding opportunities. And again, this year they've been helping us understanding uh, all the uh, recovery fund in particular uh, that were uh, put in, uh, in place by, by Europe and how all the various local initiatives could benefit uh, from, uh, from these um, services. We've been uh, using our ambassadors network to try to spread the news to the various local stakeholders, uh, finding for giving them a way to benefit again from this, uh, from this local funding and develop their local time machines. Now, uh, this is, these aspects are essentially uh, all the elements we had planned to do in the current phase of the project. Maybe for those who do not remember exactly the entire story, I will just recap what we call the four uh, phases or the four eras of the Time Machine project. We had uh, first a bootstrapping phase between 2016 and 2019, in which preparing for uh, the Fed flagship call, we, we started from one to 33 institutions. We prepared a 100 page submission program and we actually started uh, a way of collective designing a shared dream. Then we entered for 2019 and 2020 into what was called the Time Machine uh, coordinated supported action where we received 1 million from the European, European Commission. And out of that million, we collectively wrote a 10 year roadmap. We defined the collective governance, which is currently in place. And we scaled up from 33 to 600 institutions, which is our current uh, community. Then out of the uh, 2020, based on the creation of a time machine organization, which is one of the results of the time machine CSA, uh, we started a, a period which was the idea of growing and densifying uh, the network. We organized a collective effort for building the time machine. Uh, we designed through the development of local time machine and project, the first building blocks. This is what I just showed. Uh, and we prepared 
for the next stage, which is the funding for a large scale research initiative to be launched in 2024. So the initial setup, which was to have a, a Fed flagship did not work out because Fed flagships were not present in uh, Horizon Europe, but a series of other tools uh, and funding tools uh, replaced them. And so the big question since 2020 is how would actually Time Machine uh, managed to develop its plan uh, in the particular uh, new ecosystem which was uh, created by the European Commission. Um, and so this is one of our major efforts for this, this has been one of our major efforts in 20 in 21. Um, concretely, uh, Time Machine uh, en has engaged now in two long term projects which are aiming to insert the project in a sustainable way in the European ecosystem, especially with the objective of securing its funding, not short term, but quite long term till at least 2030. And these two projects uh, are the following there's one project which is the follow up of uh, what was the cultural heritage partnership project, which is something we were discussing with Brussels in 2020 as being one possible uh, placeholder for Time Machine. Uh, what the position of, of, uh, of the Commission was to say that they would need to have slightly more coordination with all the European actors on cultural heritage to go in that way. And this is resulting in, in the project ARCH, which is a co co coordinated supported action, which has been submitted to the, co to the, um, to the Commission and we'll have news about this beginning of next year. And then we have a second large scale project, which is the preparation of the kick for creative industry, which is planned to be launched uh, in 2024, which is not yet submitted, but in high level of preparation. This is called the project ICE. Um, with the project ARC, uh, Arch, the time machine will participate to the long-term shaping of European research and innovation on cultural heritage. And with the project ICE, it will be essentially about uh, shaping uh, the way uh, in which time machine could, uh, could contribute with its exploration and exploitation area to the creative industry. So you will have in the next session uh, two um, uh, special guests for these two projects that are going to present in much more detail, uh, what are uh, the, uh, the structure of this project and how actually uh, the next steps are going to be, um, to be organized. Um, the point I want just like to stress now is this schema that you will see again and again uh, during the coming, uh, the coming hours, uh, uh, which is kind of summarizing essentially where we are. Uh, we had for the first and two phase, 1 million, which permitted to make a roadmap and create the time machine organization. We are now in phase three, and we do this growing of the time machine itself, partly uh, through uh, the financial uh, support of uh, the membership, uh, partly through uh, support from some uh, member states, especially uh, Austria, which is helping us uh, a lot and have been uh, very precious in this bootstrapping phase, uh, but partly also by submitting a series of projects uh, through the project scouting services, uh, through uh, the various uh, uh, distributed um, uh, organization that we've been uh, putting in place uh, and that is permitting on what we call the three pillars of time machine uh, the research the infrastructure and the exploitation to build some initial building blocks here we're talking about a couple of, of million uh, euros so it's not yet what we had in mind but it's already a first step it's we, for this we have a current governance which is adapted and we are going to go uh, this way uh, at least till 2000 23 or 2024. Uh, on that basis, uh, as I mentioned, we hope to change of scale in 2024 and uh, start these large scale initiatives, not taking the form of an integrated Fed flagship, but dividing uh, the effort into the various domain uh, of uh, organization of time machine. For research and innovation and part of Horizon Europe, this is the uh, ARC uh, project, which we're gonna hear you're going to hear a bit, a bit more uh, in the next session. Uh, for exploitation, this is the KIC project and the ICE project. Uh, and for infrastructure, uh, we still, and this is one of our objectives for 2022, uh, trying to see how uh, the time machine uh, infrastructure would insert itself uh, based on the existing uh, development of Europeana, but also of the European Science Cloud, uh, etc. Uh, what will change 
essentially from phase three to phase four in a situation where Time Machine is not managing directly or engaging a very specific project, but is hoping to become a, a, an important player at European level in redistributing uh, the money uh, for the research uh, on the one hand and uh, the exploitation, especially in the domain of creative industry on the other hand. Um, this is important because now we have a particular way of organizing ourselves, uh, which will probably change in 2024. And the role uh, of the various institutions which are participating in Time Machine can be uh, twofold. Either you are participating, engaging in local Time Machine, helping us building the networks, and you benefit from the services of a Time Machine organization, or you would like to take part in uh, the uh, governance itself of this new way of, of organizing the thematics and the direction uh, of Time Machine itself. And for this, you need to be a founding members, like the one which I've been uh, following up so far. So this division will continue in the coming years. And again, I think depending on the type of organization you are, there are some various forms of, of relevance for you in these two models. Uh, what I should stress is that the fact that we are participating to this project is showing that Time Machine uh, and Time Machine organization is viewed more than ever as a, as a very important actor in the European ecosystem on cultural heritage at its various level from, uh, let's say, research and innovation, infrastructure and exploitation. And this is due uh, to uh, some, a bit to our effort, but essentially to the bottom up work, which you've been doing uh, with each of the projects. I mean, Time Machine appeared now organizing the local time machines at European, uh, at European scale as being one of the rare actors which has this contact from the ground, which has the possibility of uh, linking uh, some investment and some strategy with concrete things which are happening in concrete city. And this is why, I mean, this would say bottom up and top down approach is, is, is one of the very specific and very valuable aspect of, of time machine. This is why it is actually recognized by a, our partners and the European Commission as being valuable. Uh, so to finish and to conclude, going back to these, uh, this metaphor, let's say, of, of, of these uh, early pioneers that wanted to use technology to, to, to invent maybe a new way of life, uh, past, the past is a new territory. I mean, this is what we've been keeping saying. It's still a, an explore and uncharted territory and one of the ambition of time machine was previous precisely to come up with new tools enabling to uh, show this uh, richness to exploit in a new way and and which would in retrospect make us think that it was really the beginning of a discovery which uh, i would say traditional method did not enable to do uh, so far and so if the past is a new territory the local time machines are communities of pioneers and uh, the Time Machine organization role is helping the new pioneers to have access to tools, access to funding, and to be part of a, of a grand scheme, which uh, is simply building a Time Machine together. So thank you for your uh, continuous support. And uh, before maybe moving to questions, uh, we will start a session now where we would like to show up uh, some of, of the elements which are happening in the time machine networks. It's not an easy thing because I think you saw on the page that there are many, many things happening in parallel. Uh, but so for this first session, we will, we will ask uh, some of our ambassadors or national ambassadors to give us a bit of an update on, uh, on what is going on in the network in their various countries. And then we'll, we'll have a moment for questions before going into the rest of our programs. I handed it over to you, Kevin. Uh, thank you very much, Frederick. Really appreciate that. Uh, so as Frederick said, uh, we'll be handing over to a, a series of our ambassadors now. Uh, we sent around a bit of a, a list uh, just a couple hours ago with the speaking order, but uh, I'll call on each of them uh, one by one. Uh, hopefully they're here. And uh, please ask them to unmute themselves and uh, speak for uh, three minutes. So um, uh, please, uh, Robert uh, Sablatnik. Uh, you're muted. Uh, one second. Sorry. Thank you for for inter introducing me, and I will report something about the Austrian time machine branch. And as uh, Frederick already said, that the local time machines are of importance. We have two things in Austria that were going on: the local time machine that is uh, 
I'm reporting now is uh, the Loma Austria time machine, and then I'm gonna present also some initiative that tries to put this time machine idea to uh, into life in Austria. So the Loma Austria time machine was a feasibility study, and the the idea here was to really test out whether the idea of having all the data in a common place and how to put them together. If we start from very small museums, like, uh, like these very local museums in, in some, some, some rural area, to the big ones, maybe in Vienna. And the, the question was how to put all these data together and how can we make this already digitized data accessible to all the, all, uh, the ones that are within this network. And uh, we were like looking on different types of, of, of institutions like museums, archives, libraries, uh, archaeology things, and so on and so forth, and try to put some, some, some first prototype, like to show that there's a feasibility study that this is possible and how it's possible and what could be the benefit of that. So we took 16 different institutions from uh, Lower Austria and uh, tried to, to find the common thing that would put them together. And uh, this was the Europeana data model. We, we selected that in order to find out whether it's possible. And this is maybe also important, how to process the data afterwards so that we enrich the data automatically by transcribing things, by getting more information, by putting uh, sources together and things like that. So it ended up with this kind of um, um, prototype where we have this resource description framework where we have these links to the local museums as well as kind of central database. And uh, we, we have shown that this is possible. And now we try to get uh, another funding from the uh, government of Lower Austria to really put that into place. And this would be uh, a project like in the, in the dimensions of 600,000 euros in order to get um, this really, really running for the uh, area of Lower, Lower Austria. And um, the second thing I would like to report is that we try to get this time machine idea uh, really locally down to all the, the, the players that we have in Austria. And we, we and this is uh, Thomas Aigner and uh, myself, try to find some other people uh, to put up a so-called Austrian time machine network. And uh, we found someone from the museums, uh, Museums Bund, uh, which is the, the, the local organization called Museums in Austria, uh, that would help us, Sabine Fauland, and people from the uh, Bundeskanzleramt, which is a local ministry here, and from the Austrian Center of Digital Humanities and Cultural Heritage. And then we started to find out who is who are the important ones in, in Austria. And we had two different two meetings already with uh, more than 40, 50 partners in Austria from uh, museums like the Belvedere Research Center in the Belvedere Museum and uh, the museum of uh, local museum like of, of, of Steiermark, Styria. And uh, there are of course also the lower Austria museums that are there, the Austrian uh, Film Museum, the State Archive and uh, many, many more. I like the, the local ones from Vienna, like the Vienna Museum and the Zoom uh, Children Museum and so on and so forth. So lots of partners to try to get these ideas into, uh, into in the formulation on what is really needed, especially here in Austria. And the second thing is, of course, to uh, that there's also a couple of ministries involved there to, to show the ministry that there is a need and there's a, there's, this is a, it's a good idea to start with digitization and to start with this time uh, machine um, idea locally, such that we afterwards can go to the next level on the European level. And of course, this involves also to get money from, from uh, the ministries and from the state in order to, 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 to provide, provide um, possibilities for this kind of preliminary studies. This is the first thing. And the second thing is to have some master plan, especially here from, in Austria, to, to get this time machine idea really into, the, into place. So this was a short uh, report from Austria. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, very interesting and of course, very important for us uh, being the headquarter of the time machine organization uh, in Vienna. Uh, now, please now, uh, Anja Stelek from Hungary. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, I turn my camera as well. So, uh, hi, everyone from Hungary, Budapest. Thanks for uh, having me here. And I would just like to give a very short uh, brief about uh, the connection we made with the Budapest time machine. 
we have a very uh, fruitful and rich um, um, network uh, already around us. Uh, we have a, a very good cooperation with the university, um, with uh, architecture uh, students who are making uh, 3D models uh, from our uh, architectural plan uh, materials. And we have a contribution to get these 3D models uh, uh, in the recharge. And uh, our next step uh, in, the, um, in the process of the Budapest time machine is to build these models in it, uh, hopefully, next year. Uh, we also have a, a great connection with an NGO who are uh, celebrating the 100 years old uh, buildings in Budapest. They also uh, received recently the materials from us. Um, and uh, we also have um, a co-production in a short film and the VR uh, project, which was shot in a villa uh, building in Budapest. Uh, the premiere of the film will be uh, beginning of next year, so stay tuned. Uh, the title is Open the Door and uh, 1939 is for the VR uh, session. Uh, we are also preparing uh, the anniversary of the unification of Budapest. Uh, our capital will turn uh, 150 years old in two years. And we have a cooperation with the municipality of Budapest. We are trying to bring uh, the Budapest time machine as a main uh, source and the main platform to build cultural and, uh, and uh, historical and heritage focused events for this great anniversary. So it's already a um, project in progress. And last but not least, uh, we as the Budapest Time Machine also had a great invitation uh, from a Swedish uh, partner. There is a common effort to prepare an application for Creative Europe where we would focus on architectural plans uh, as well, and uh, to build a, a common uh, project upon this and to uh, bring uh, those projects to the stakeholders and get also feedbacks from them. And uh, of course, in the future, I would also like to know uh, more on the Hungarian other time machines, but this was only for Budapest for short and looking forward to the future with all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Agnes. Uh, most appreciated. Uh, that will go to uh, Anna Christophe uh, in France. Hello, everyone. Hope you'll hear me well. So um, I'm a very great pleasure to give you some news from the French uh, TM network. Uh, the first thing I would like to like to talk to you is about the diversity of the French uh, time machine members. Uh, it was the occasion to, to check uh, the, these members and it's great to see that without counting the research project carried out by this member, uh, there is more or less equally members from research than from private organization, 43% each. And the last 15% are from public sectors. All these members form a very rich uh, ecosystem from different and very complementary fields. History, cultural sectors, numeric, tourism, geographical data, architecture, creative industry, and so on. So there is a lot of very interesting local projects. And in three minutes, I couldn't tell you about everyone's plans. So. I will focus on one initiative, um, which reflects that what this diversity can bring to a project. We are participating in the virtual and smart cultural tourism project. Uh, you will have a presentation uh, during the conference on this project. And we organize a workshop, the Paris workshop in June. And this workshop allowed us to bring together actors from very different backgrounds, researchers, okay, but also startup or public organization from the world of tourism, cultural heritage, 3D reconstruction, 
digital technologies, creative industry, or working on it all at once. All of these people work on the bottlenecks, serving needs, and business cases uh, in the field of smart and virtual cultural tourism. And it was a very, very exciting experience. So what I can say for the future and is that we would like to increase the exchanges between the French members of TMO. And the good news is that we have reinforcements on the IGN side, and we are going to launch new initiative uh, to make these people uh, communicate better, like some newsletter or some meetings. So um, I would like to conclude with an um, invitation. Contact us, join the Time Member, Time Machine Member Network. And if you are already in a member and being an ambassador will interest you, uh, contact us. We are very few uh, French ambassadors and it could be great to have new uh, ambassadors with us from other uh, fields. So, um, that's all for French. Try to make it short. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anna. I uh, really appreciate that. And uh, with that, we'll quickly move to uh, Paul Butelar in Ireland. Yeah, hi, good morning. Um, thanks for having me here. So yeah, I'm representing Ireland. I'm based in, in, in Galway here uh, at the Data Science Institute. And we do things like data science, data analytics, and AI applications. But we also have a, a big interest in digital humanities. Um, so the situation in Ireland is that there is not yet an established local uh, time, machine, time machine community, but um, we're reaching out to different players in the areas. And we basically have two, two initiatives now. So we in Galway, we're working on uh, what would be a Galway or Ireland time machine around the industrial heritage of, uh, of Ireland in the 18th and 19th century. So these are a lot of the canals and, and mills that you can see here. And um, yeah, so they were, they were working mostly with uh, text analysis of documents around this, generating a knowledge graph from that and, and then generating a chatbot around that. So we want to, to de develop that more into a multimodal setting and also a spatial uh, setting, but that's still um, work to be done. So the, the other initiative emerging now is in, in Dublin. So Galway is here on the West Coast and Dublin is on the East Coast. Dublin is a, is a very big city. Galway is a small, is a, a small city. Uh, but Dublin has a very interesting history also from the 19th century uh, related to, to the, the literature produced in this context. So the, the Gothic novel is, is, has been very big in, in Dublin. So famous writers like Bram Stoker on uh, Famously, Dracula and Oscar Wilde and other authors have been uh, positioning their work uh, also in, in Dublin. And there are studies uh, based at uh, uh, University in Dublin, UCD, on the literary analysis of that, but also the spatial analysis of this. So there is an idea to develop a, a time machine around this of Gothic Dublin. Uh, and um, yeah, so that, that's emerging. Um, so the other thing is reaching out to um, to players in this. So uh, there's the Museum of Literature in Ireland, which is based in Dublin. So that would be in the Gothic Dublin setting. And here in Galway, we have the Galway Museum uh, with an interest in this area and also other museums that we need to, to contact. So the work on setting things up in terms of a community is, is now uh, starting ongoing. And we have two interesting initiatives, I think for uh, local time machines. So thank you very much. That's uh, great, Paul. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll hand over to uh, Zarko Vujosevic, please, in uh, Serbia. Thank you, Kevin. Dear colleagues, uh, thank you for inviting me to give a short report going on in Serbia. My name is Jarko Vujošević uh, from the Faculty of Philosophy of the University of Belgrade. But for this occasion, I would like to uh, focus at uh, one institution, namely the new established unit of the Serbian Academy of Sciences and Arts, 
called Audiovisual Archives and Digitization Center. So Audiovisual Archives and Digitization Center, apparently uh, uh, pretending to be the central national institution for digitizing uh, of the cultural historical heritage. Uh, since they started with their activities last year, uh, they uh, launched several projects, uh, two of which uh, have been already comp uh, completed, uh, namely the digitization of the so-called Gospel of Miroslav, the oldest uh, preserved Serbian manuscript from the end of the 12th century, uh, being uh, part of the UNESCO heritage and uh, kept in the National Museum of Serbia. Uh, then also completed is the project of digitization of uh, uh, early modern charters, mostly of Habsburg origin, kept in the archives of Sremski Karlovci. And there are also several running projects concerning mostly uh, stocks being kept in the uh, Academy of Sciences. So uh, digitization of old, so-called old collection of the archives of the Academy the collection of old and rare books, also uh, in the academy, but in uh, its library. Uh, then uh, uh, digitization of all printed editions of the academy since the first half of the 19th century. Uh, a further project is the so-called uh, Diplomatarium Serbicum Digitale, namely the digitized uh, uh, database of the medieval charters issued by uh, Serbian authorities. But digitized are not only written sources, but also uh, uh, stocks and materials concerning other uh, uh, sciences, for example, uh, a collection of the botanical garden in Belgrade or a collection of uh, uh, former professor of uh, chemistry and histology of the Belgrade University, uh, some microfilms of, uh, uh, from the period of uh, 100 years ago. So many uh, different things are being digitized, but uh, uh, what I would like also to stress is that, that uh, Audio Visit, uh, Visual Archives and Center for Digit uh, Digitization of the Academy of Sciences are still not members of the Time Machine Organization. They are very interested uh, in becoming a member, uh, not only because of the exchange possibilities in general, but uh, uh, also because of the possibilities uh, of, uh, of funding in frames of uh, different projects. Uh, they are namely very well equipped, uh, supported by the government of Serbia. Uh, they have very nice uh, technical equipment, but they still don't have opportunity, for example, to employ uh, the scientific experts for processing uh, the, the metadata. Uh, they are lacking uh, on storage, etc. And uh, uh, it could be a good opportunity for both sides for uh, uh, the cooperation. So thank you once more for uh, your attention. And uh, I'm glad to be here. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, well, now we'll go to uh, our friends in Germany with uh, Sander Münster, please. Many thanks, Kevin. And my pleasure to present briefly about what is going on in Germany concerning the Time Machine Organization. So, luckily, we have a national coordination office since 2018 with uh, financed by first the Saxonian uh, state ministry and now the Thuringian state ministry. And one of the big uh, topics dealt by this coordination office was to do a, a survey amongst the German stakeholders. So Tom Timmerhoff, which is our national uh, uh, coordinating colleague there, he contacted around 100 uh, of the, the full base of uh, German members and had interviews with 30 stakeholders during the last year. And besides that, we made some uh, closer links to the state ministries, five we are, I would say, in being in close exchange with, plus also took part in several national uh, applications. So at the moment, we are in the finishing line with a 400k national project application to support the, some uh, 
specific activities in Germany. Besides that, of course, we have this partnership for virtual and smart cultural tourism. Anna Christoffel already reported about it, and that brought us to two regional workshops we conducted in mid this year in Saxony and Thuringia with stakeholders. And finally, I would love to briefly introduce about a really fresh information activity which took place. So one of the big issues specifically in Germany is that there are only, I would say, more or less weak connections between the industries and research and of course the cultural end users and stakeholders in that field of digital heritage. And one activity where we are preparing since 20, 2018 was how to closer how to closing this gap and how to uh, increasing those links between these different communities so i'm really happy to announce that just a couple of days ago the dma digital management agency as a cooperative uh, society has been founded in berlin with currently nine stakeholding SME companies and specific focus on supporting the transfer between research to industries or to SMEs and of course to a cultural sector and of course to connect SMEs in order to build, uh, building better servicing chains. So many thanks to the DMA colleagues who made this possible and that's my news from Germany. Many thanks for your attention. Thank you so much, Andrew. That's uh, that's great news. Uh, very new. Uh, very cool. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll go to uh, our colleagues in Italy. I believe we might have two, but we definitely have uh, one. So I'll introduce uh, first Antonello Migliozzi, please. Hello. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about our activity also on behalf of uh, Antonella Ambrosio and uh, Rosalba Di Medio of the Department of Humanistic that are also part of the Time Machine Ambassador team for South of Italy. Uh, we, we got uh, different activity. We, we have this kind of partnership uh, starting from the Department of Humanistic with our Musa Center, that is the Museum Center of uh, Department of Agriculture. So we have a sort of landscape skill inside, inside the humanistic and inside the paleography and uh, the, the, the skill of, of, uh, of the Department of Humanistic of Rosalba and Antonella. Uh, so this, uh, this was because we, we want to emphasize a sort of geographic uh, uh, the geographic issue of some uh, of, of all the, 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 the news or, or the, the data that we, we, we have in the archives. And to do this, uh, we, we got a lot of uh, activities, uh, especially for having uh, a regular and associated member in order to to get interest on on this and we have now a good network uh, that we want to of, co of course to enhance uh, and a good network with the archive and with the library or other department like uh, department of economic science and statistics or other university like the polytechnic of milan we we are interested for the the next times so with the two projects one of these is uh, we have presented uh, a, a european cooperation project a small scale european cooperation project that is called the roots with uh, the archives of uh, belgrade and uh, the croatia and other partner in in the east europe the project tells about the stories of cultural heritage in a different ma manner, and uh, it provides connection between all the travel logs, diaries, or documents, maps, images, and uh, with the contemporary uh, cultural, creative, or artistic experience. 
then another one is uh, about uh, uh, the com the commission the the merging merging the unpublished uh, the notice the, the news of uh, and the data from uh, from uh, unpublished uh, re register with uh, uh, the geographic the geographic issue this is uh, for instance uh, the the root of uh, of the so-called the greek wine inside the the, the documents uh, of the monasteries in the in the campania region and in southern italy and this uh, will open uh, another another possibility of uh, of collaboration uh, about the processing, uh, the, the register processing, especially with uh, to have uh, a digital edition and also to uh, to have uh, the processing about uh, about this digitalism. And this is more or less our activities um, in, for, for, for our activities in, uh, in the Southern Italy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Antonello. I very much appreciate that. Uh, I'm not sure she's here. Uh, I'll check. Um, uh, Gemma Colasanti, also in Italy. Uh, perhaps not. All right, uh, we'll miss that. But then we'll move on quickly because I do see he's here on my screen. Uh, Thomas Parkola in Poland. Yes, and thank you. And good afternoon from Poland. Uh, so in our case, we have uh, several initiatives around Time Machine. And in my short update, I will uh, describe uh, three of them. So first, uh, our Polish Daria Consortium is currently running a large scale national infrastructure project for digital art and humanities uh, with a budget reaching 30 million euros. So the project is called uh, Daria Lab because in the project we built several distributed uh, laboratories focused on source data, enrichment, uh, semantic discovery, data analytics, and also visualization. In the project, we are going to buy equipment. We also are going to build online tools, services, and resources uh, that will support, uh, generally speaking, digital art and humanities research, both in public and but also uh, private sectors. So the project is related to really the core uh, infrastructure. Second, we also work on full text search feature for our, our uh, Polish uh, European accredited national metadata aggregator, which is called FDC. And in this action, we also uh, want to or plan to provide search feature for music notes in our uh, aggregator. So this action is related more to, so to say, aggregation and discovery of resources. And third, there are also several regional initiatives in Poland focused on Mm, data aggregation and also access to scientific or cultural heritage data. Uh, so one of them is uh, Leopoldina platform that is being built by local GLAM consortium in Wrocław. And it's an aggregation workflow infrastructure for cultural heritage content, which is based on IIIF resources and also interconnected digital data repositories uh, related to uh, lots of universities. So that's that's all. Thank you and greetings from Poland. Thanks so much. Uh, always, ni always nice to see you, uh, at least uh, once a year. So uh, nice to see you again. And uh, uh, with that one, we'll go to uh, Reina Bastardas in Spain, please. Sorry. Good afternoon. Yes, I am Maria Reina Bastardas. I am from the University of Barcelona, the Faculty of Philology and Communication. And today I am talking on behalf of the Institute de Culturas Medievals of the University of Barcelona, and particularly on behalf of Marichel Simó, who is very sorry, but she could not attend this meeting as she had a previous engagement. Uh, so I'm taking her place. Uh, from the University of Barcelona, and under the heading of the Barcelona Time Machine, we are working in two different projects. One of them called Women, Power and Territory in the Middle Ages aims to virtually reconstruct and map 
all the spaces of female cultural patronage in the Middle Ages, the women's networks of in monastic and spiritual promotion, as well as to digitalize or document female artistic and literary works during the Middle Ages from the 12th to the 15th century. Another project, its uh, title is A Day in Barcelona around 1450, building a multidimensional model of the late medieval Barcelona. So the title, it already says, it aims to build a multidimensional model of the Barcelona in the Middle Ages, in the late Middle Ages. The main goal is to introduce a virtual visitor to the inner and external spaces of the city. Through the use of images, sounds, texts, videos, and virtual 3D reconstructions, it will be possible to show the urban, political, economical, and social evolution of the city in the 15th century. Its architectural space, its artistic heritage, as well as the inner spaces. So the city buildings, churches, hospitals, monasteries, and royal and nobility palaces. Uh, for this project, different type of historical sources will be used, written sources, so the archival research with using royal, municipal, notarial, and ecclesiastic documentation, as well as private documentation, as well as literary sources, Econo iconographical sources, sorry, so cadastres, drawings, prints, maps, etc. And finally, archaeological architectonical and artistic items, so medieval buildings, archaeological finds, and sites, sculptures, etc. So we have these two projects. In order to establish a solid network of local partnerships and stakeholders, we are also preparing a local consortium made of universities, research institutes, as it is the IRCUM, Institute de Recerca en Culturas Medievals, uh, archives, libraries, museums, and as well public and even private uh, entities, organizations. We would be very interested in contacting colleagues from other universities who may be working in similar lines of research. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, we, we have a couple of our colleagues from Finland who, who are having you know, a lot of success building their community up there. Uh, so first we'll, uh, we'll have uh, Tommy Aharanta uh, say a couple words. And then uh, after him, uh, Juha Henriksen will uh, also present slightly longer uh, about a report that uh, they completed up there. So please, uh, Tommy. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, dear colleagues, greetings from Helsinki. Current year in Finland has been an active one. We have, we have 40 member organizations in Finland and about half of us have been meeting each other online on a regular basis. The purpose of the, those meetings has been keeping our members aware of the progress of the initiative and collecting information of our members' visits and strong points regarding it. These visits and strong points were collected in Juha Henriksson's study on time machine in Finland. The study was published in Finnish in early summer, and during autumn it was translated in English. It is available in our consortium's website, and we will hear more of it as Juha is presenting it to us right after this presentation. The, the study has been often referred to also outside of our community, so it has proven to be used and much needed within the cultural heritage community. During the Autumn, Juha and I have been given several presentations on the initiative. First in October, we were at the webinar hosted by the Academy of Finland, which is a major funding source for academic research and research infrastructures in Finland. After that, we have also appeared in events organized by the Society of the Finnish Archivists, by the Finnish Business Archive Association, and also by the Digital Cultural Heritage Community, DIGIME. Based on these events, it seems to us that Time Machine is becoming a household name among cultural heritage professionals. 
Last, I'd like to bring to your attention two interesting pieces of information. First, during last spring, a study was made on building a large-scale digitizing facility in the town of Mikkeli, which is often referred to as archival capital of Finland. A data lab is already under construction there. We work for the decision makers to notice the promising study and to consider its realization. There's also a national cultural heritage strategy in the making in Finland. We will do our utmost so that the rise in digital cultural heritage and time machines key position in it are taken into consideration when the strategy is made. Thank you. It's a Pleasure to be here with you. Thank you so much, Tommy, uh, as always, for everything you do uh, yeah, for us in the community. Uh, and now, um, uh, uh, Juha, please. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yes, I was given a little more time to present this uh, time machine in, in Finland study because uh, I think uh, this will be some kind of example how to proceed in a country because uh, what we heard from previous uh, ambassadors also in Finland uh, we have a, quite a lot of members and these include various types of organizations and communities whose needs and capabilities vary greatly from the time machine perspective we have many uh, archives museums uh, and libraries, also universities and research institutes, also some user groups such as historians uh, uh, association and history teachers association. We have Finnish broadcasting company with a lot of audiovisual material, uh, IT center for science in Finland and, and also quite a lot of companies. The aim of this survey was to promote the networking of Finnish members as well as to promote new cooperation projects. Uh, here in Finland we had quite a broad expertise and experience in various projects and technologies related to digital cultural heritage such as uh, artificial reality, virtual reality, remote presence, supercomputing, automated description, natural language processing and map-based application. Uh, but this has, uh, many of these projects have been uh, quite uh, small and local. So we think that Time Machine offers a unique opportunity to expand this expertise and build also international cooperation on it. Um, Objectives of this study was, uh, first of all, same as uh, in Time Machine in general, accelerating the digitization of cultural heritage, uh, processing like linking uh, material and also developing the long-term preservation, but also to promote interoperability both at national and international level. So I think this uh, Finnish study may provide ideas for cooperation in countries other than Finland also. Uh, this study uh, was published in Finnish, as Tommy already told us, uh, in May and in English uh, in August, and it may be uploaded uh, for free from the open access pages from uh, of Music Archive Finland and the English translation was kindly provided by links of which is also Time Machine regular member and also one of the leading companies in its field in Europe with an extensive range of language services. So how we carry out this study first we send a questionnaire to all Finnish Time Machine members with uh, quite many questions. Uh, these written responses were complemented by video interviews during last uh, summer. Uh, and then this uh, 
responses and video discussions were supplemented on the basis of uh, quite a vast amount of written material. Uh, not all, but uh, quite so many of these uh, member organizations participated in the survey. And uh, as a result, this survey, I think it promotes uh, various types of projects related to time machine. But at the same time, because there are so many uh, responses and there are also uh, uh, large national institutions like the National Library, Nas National Museum, National Archives, it provides a fairly broad and diverse picture of the state of digitalization of cultural heritage in total in Finland. So as Tommy mentioned, this uh, study has already been referred quite a lot in discussions here in Finland. So uh, what comes to the results uh, first, uh, how we can uh, influence the content of time machine. It's uh, of course important, not only in Finland, but uh, in Europe, in all countries. Uh, so. At the moment, we haven't participated in the request for comment process, but we should participate in it so that the uh, time machine will be uh, fulfilling uh, the needs of uh, Finnish members. And also, of course, participate in the events and also we two ambassadors play a key role here. Uh, but, uh, with the cooperation with Time Machine, we can also develop the existing national infrastructure. Finna, Finna is uh, like European in Finland. Uh, it's very much uh, like European, but in the Finnish level, it's used by the majority of Finnish libraries, archives and museums already. So can the Time Machine cooperation help to develop Finna, for instance, creating more solutions for learning and research. There is all, already this Finna research uh, with uh, places to search, but can it be more delivered? And also creating sustainable development solutions. And also the, we have here in Finland, a national digital preservation service for cultural heritage, which is funded by uh, Ministry of Culture and Education. And uh, it's uh, used by uh, quite a lot of cultural heritage institutions. So time machine cooperation may strengthen the international networking of this uh, preservation service. Then, of course, the enhancement of mass digitization. Tommy already t told us that, that there is uh, plan uh, plans for new national digitization center in Mikkeli. So I think uh, here, time machine cooperation is very important. Uh, and in Finland, we have uh, quite a lot of experience uh, uh, in ontologies, uh, for instance, Finto service, this is an ontology service. Uh, then local time machine, of course, uh, we should propose projects to the local time machine register, but we, there have also been uh, preliminary discussions about cooperation with uh, some new local time machine projects, for instance, Old castles and Tuomelina Sea Fortress. Kautsina folk fiddling tradition is an example of a, a entangled cultural heritage of humanity project. Uh, and Sami community is Europe's only indigenous community. So, Sami country may also be a very interesting local time machine project. Uh, now uh, we have in Kajani new Lumi supercomputer Euro APC project and other uh, computational infrastructure of uh, IT Center for Science in Finland. 
And uh, I must also mention this Wikimuseo point fi, uh, which is a very uh, fast growing virtual museum platform here in Finland. And we have also other experts to the virtual virtualization of museums. Uh, and also may time machine uh, some kind of uh, like uh, give continuity to uh, like read project or MIMAD project which have uh, ended uh, but uh, we have participated quite actively in those projects here in Finland and also of course we could can offer very uh, large amounts of material that can be used to test the technology and services still have developed in time machine. Uh, so I encourage uh, that uh, some uh, similar kind of study to be carried out in other countries also because this uh, has been uh, this has proven to be a very uh, successful way to strengthen the, the uh, networking of uh, uh, our fin Finnish members. Thank you very much. Hey, th thank you so much, Juha. I uh, very, very much appreciate you uh, giving, our, uh, giving us a quick presentation on that and uh, the great work that you do. Uh, so, as Frederick promised, uh, we are uh, pretty much on time, so we still have um, about uh, 15 minutes left for any questions, uh, either to the ambassadors or about, uh, or to Frederick or board members about um, the things Frederick presented. Uh, so please uh, either raise your hand or you can type into the chat and we'll be monitoring that. Um, don't be shy. <laughs> Well, no questions yet. I guess we I guess we solved uh, everything in uh, in thirty minutes. So no problem. Maybe a couple of words about the program. Uh, so so here we started. I mean, we wanted to give you the general impulse and also to show you I mean, what was happening very rapidly in the different countries. I think you got a clear idea that it's difficult to summarize because I mean, there's, I mean, you saw the list of the local time machine. You saw, I mean, the very quick report of the of the ambassadors. I mean, this is this is overwhelming. And, and, and I think I can speak on, on the behalf of all the time machine team uh, I mean, seeing I mean, such a distributed process autonomously going on is, is, is super, super rewarding. Uh, and, and so we wish, I mean, uh, of course, that each, every year be, the density is increasing. We organized, I mean, the, the, the event in, in that way. Uh, the, the next session, you're gonna have uh, two uh, parallel sessions. Uh, those, uh, one for those aimed more at the long-term financing aspect of the time machine, and, and, and another one for those in, interested in the local short-term financing aspect. So you will, I mean, uh, Kevin and, and Julia will tell you a bit more about this. Uh, and so you will have the possibility of going to one session or, or the others. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow, uh, focus will be, will be brought on the, on the local time machine projects with, with also various parallel sessions uh, in the morning. And in the afternoon, you're going to have the uh, time machine general uh, assembly um, for, the, for the time machine members. Any, any question? All right. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't look like any questions for now, but uh, we're hoping uh, the parallel sessions in the in the next one will provoke uh, some discussion. I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of really relevant uh, things in there for the whole community uh, and your projects. So uh, with that, perhaps then we'll we'll, um, we'll leave that for now and we'll reconvene at uh, three thirty, uh, same link, same room. Uh, it will be an introduction by Julia Nordgraf, and then uh, two parallel sessions. You'll be able to select those rooms uh, on your own. There'll be two breakout rooms. You can select the one uh, that you would like to follow or, or you can change at any time. So we'll, we'll see you back here uh, in around 45 minutes at uh, 3.30. Uh, thank you so much for attending.